Hello everybody and welcome to the biggest build I've done yet, although, at least I think. But yeah, welcome back to Kyurak Educational Pack, it has been a while, I've been so, so busy with university, it's it's unbelievable, so there won't be a lot of videos uh, after this either, um, for a while, it's, it's, you know, university, it's more work than I ever initially expected it to be, but yeah. Don't worry, because I have a huge, massive build for you to, to um, I guess, as a compensation. Uh, it's it's a whole bunch of animals. I think it's six? six. We're doing six different animals in one episode, so that's quite crazy. But um, do keep in mind that, uh, as I said, uh, my upload schedule won't be as, as uh, frequent as it used to. But that's fine. Um, actually, I didn't make a video about the... The Banyard Animal Pack, um, which maybe I will, but I can quickly just talk about it here. And just a quick note that I want to say is that um, there's a Banyard Animal Pack coming to Planet Zoo. If you haven't heard, there's um, there's a trailer out. If they've announced some screenshots, it's Banyard Animals. You know, this is probably my least favorite pack ever. <laughs> I don't think they can make. Uh, a more disappointing pack than the Banyan animals, and I know it's very divided, okay? I'm aware, right? I know that a lot of people, a lot of you, really love uh, this pack, really love all the Banyan animals, and I'll be honest, some of the animals are growing a bit on me, I'm quite liking some of them, but it's just I don't really care about domestic animals, that's the truth. Um, you you can, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people do, I just don't. I really don't, <laughs> but I'm still quite excited for the pack because it's quite interesting that it's seven animals instead of eight animals as an animal pack, there's no exhibit animal, and 60 plus building pieces, so it's like a weird hybrid between a scenery pack and an animal pack, which is really cool, and it's quite interesting to see what they will do with that in the future, but I'll probably talk about that more in, in a more in-depth video about the, the new pack, but for now... Let's talk about this massive build that we're doing, because what we're actually doing is a huge mixed species habitat for all the African savanna species, not all, but a, a small handful of the African savanna species, more specifically the reticulated giraffe, plains zebra, the um, scimitar horned oryx, and they will have a shared habitat, and then also the African savanna elephant will have um, its, its own separate area, and the warthogs will have its own separate area as well. And then, interestingly, also kangaroos will be right near the entrance of this area. Um, so you will be doing the kangaroos today in this episode as well. So a lot, there's a lot to pack here. To unpack even, not to pack. There's a lot to unpack here. Um, and yeah, kangaroos and African, of course, I am aware, right? But um, it is a bit inspired from my local zoo because they have, I think, emus, I think as well wallabies right next to the kind of like large uh, mixed African savanna area and I thought that was quite a cool idea so I'm gonna do the same with kangaroos it's like a walkthrough area with the kangaroos um, and it's and they they use the same shelter building so the kangaroos will have a little bit in this huge building in the middle as well where they can uh, sleep but this huge building as you can see got a little um, redesign because I started first using the painted brick pieces um, so I wanted to basically give the feeling that it is a zoo building, you know, zoo buildings are quite basic looking buildings, I guess. Um, but that was so ugly, like, I put a roof on it, I, I've actually cut that part out where I build the roof, but I did actually put a roof on it, and my god, it was, it was a, the most ugly building I've built in a really, really long time. And I thought, I can't, I can't, okay, I'm okay, I, I'm really bad with, like, really large buildings. But that was terrible. That was really, really terrible. So that's why I did some research, I did some inspiration on how like a couple of zoos around the world do these large hoofstock shelters. And then I came across um, a zoo in Belgium, uh, Antwerp Zoo. They have this sort of um, North African, like Egyptian temple looking building, but it's just a, it's just a normal building. They decorated it with like white plaster and all these cool ornaments. So I took inspiration from that and I basically completely covered the ugly 
painted brick wall with a nice um, North African Egyptian looking uh, um, cover kind of um, like all these ornaments on the rooftop and stuff like that and the actual roof will have a glass ceiling um, to um, make it a bit more um, not not as enclosed you know especially if you look at the inside having the having the um, like sky uh, sort of window is really um, refreshing I think it has a refreshing feeling you know um, and then this is the entrance to the um, the kangaroos on this side of the building. The other side, I've, if, as you've seen, I've built the entrances to the African elephant and then also all the other uh, hoof stock um, in the giraffe. And then, yeah, here you can see the glass roof. And then I'm also putting a shade down uh, for the guests. So if it's raining or if there's... Oh, probably not raining. It's a grassland. It's a desert. But if there's, like, um, a lot of sun, you know, you have some shade as well. And you can have a look on... Uh, at the animals from an elevated view, which is quite cool as well. Um, adding supports and that. Uh, but yeah, it, it was, um, I thought, I was thinking to myself basically, like, what can I add to the Kurek Ed Educational Park? Because it's far from done, right? There's still a lot of grassland animals. And then I was thinking, you can't have a grassland zoo, like a zoo themed around the grasslands of the world and not have a mixed, like, uh, savanna. African savanna um, habitat like that would be a crime so I did it and I was putting it off because I really don't like these sorts of builds it's really big and open and um, really difficult to really detail a lot but uh, I was doing a bit of research on how a lot of real zoos have their mixed habitat builds and I think I kind of nailed it I made it interesting I as I said I have some extra um, exhibits attached to the main exhibit like the warthogs like the elephants and even the kangaroos um and the, one of the reasons by the way i added the kangaroos um despite them not being an african animal is because i really wanted to make sure that as a guest you know that this isn't an african themed zoo and there's no african theme in this pack uh, it's just a generic grassland theme and yes i have an african mixed enclosure obviously because why would you put kangaroos together with the giraffes? That doesn't make sense. But putting African animals like zebras and giraffes together into an enclosure, that makes sense. That doesn't mean that the whole area has to be African. So I added some kangaroos in the same area, like in the same shelter building, but just in a separate enclosure, just to kind of give the feeling like it's just generic grassland, not specifically African, you know. Even though the architecture, especially the building, and a couple of the other buildings that I do today, do look quite African. I just don't want to give the guests the idea that this is Africa. This is just an African little enclosure surrounded by everything that's non-African, just generic grassland. I hope that makes a bit sense because I do understand that it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have kangaroos together with your African animals. So yeah, I hope that clears stuff up. Um, and if you remember the previous episodes, we have a little Australian section as well. And right next to the Australian section, we have blue wildebeest and the main wolf uh, so you know it the, the theme isn't really strong it's not that there can't be any animals from other continents um close by each other you know close to each other there's no strict rules that's what i'm trying to say and it's quite realistic because if you go to real zoos you have a lot of these animals that don't really fit the continent or the theme but they they just put there because why not right like we like the animals why why not just put them there um and uh, in the meantime, um, I'm, the building is basically done. What I'm doing now is all the plant work for the main enclosure. And after we've done that, we'll go and move over to the warthogs and the kangaroos as well, which they're definitely stay tuned for the kangaroos. Those are the, the last animals we, we built the enclosure for. But it's a walkthrough exhibit, which I, I, I'm quite excited for because with the banyard pack, there's this new walkthrough feature that they're adding. I'm not quite sure what it is. I'm assuming that it's a sort of like walk uh, walk through event sort of thing where there's a gate where they can enter and then the guests can just walk really something like that is it just a free room for guests similar to how we have gift shop now where the guests can enter the gift shop and then walk freely maybe it's something similar with the uh with this walkthrough thing but yeah i'll, I'll probably uh, edit it once we get the update so i can make the walkthrough uh section more walkthrough friendly basically but um 
Yeah, I'm really excited for that. Actually, the free update, I'm really excited for. I think it's really cool. Um, yeah, petting zoos are quite iconic for for um, zoos, so you can't ignore them, of course. But yeah, so I think despite it being a very barren environment, I mean, it is a grassland, I think the, the, the different grass shades and even the different elevation of grasses really adds to the detail of the ground texture. And especially don't forget rocks. If you're doing these sort of things, just sp just sprinkle rocks around it. It looks really good. And if you Google actual like giraffe enclosures or zebra enclosures or even elephant enclosures, it's just rocks lying around. So just add them. It really, really sells uh, the zoo-ness of the enclosure. And it really makes it look good and not as barren as well. So that's, that's, a, that's I guess, my tip of the day. <laughs> rocks. And I'm sure you've heard it before because it's kind of an inside joke now that you have to add a lot of rocks. And it's true because you have to really add a lot of rocks. Um, but also what, I'm, what I've been trying to do recently is do the indoor of the habitats, like the actual shelters, make them look as zoo-esque as possible. And that's why I made this custom sort of fence that would, would separate the different parts of the shelter. So you'd have the elephant section, the kangaroo section, and then the mixed roofstock section. With the, um, the the giraffes and the zebras and the uh, oryx, and then also add a concrete floor because that actually work, that actually gives the shelter feeling. Because mostly there's it's not just dirt; it's mostly it, it has a proper concrete floor because it's a building, you know. Um, and then also these sort of little um, cages, where they're like little separated areas. I don't know what they're called or what they're useful for, but they always have them, so I added them as well. As you can see, the F African elephants are separated with this big metal fence. Um, this is inspired by my local zoo as well. They have this sort of huge savanna area with then this metal fence separating the African elephants from all the other animals. And they have a little water feature as well with a, a cool um, water spout, so that's nice. And then now we go over to the warthogs. The warthogs, I actually I've noticed I haven't really talked a lot about the actual building pieces I'm using here, but. Well, the warthogs, as you can see, I built this custom um, brick, not brick, like stone wall, dry dry wall, like a dry stone wall sort of thing. Um, this is definitely inspired from <laughs> the trailer, from the um, Banyard Pack trailer, because apparently it's not its own piece, but it's just the, the faux rocks just stacked up on top of each other. But I thought, I want to try that, and I tried it, and I think it works out quite well. It looks quite... Cool, I think. So yeah, that's what I did there. And then the water enclosure is relatively simple. It's just some bushes, some fallen down trees, and then actually the shelter building I copied over from one of my previous builds. It's not a, it is a blueprint, but it's, it's my own build. I just copied it over from one of my previous builds because I didn't really fancy building a whole new sort of shelter for the warthogs. It was getting late at this point. It was like, I don't know. It was, it was, it was late. I was really. It, this was, by the way. An eight and a half hour build in total in two sessions. Um, yeah, it was a it was a long it was one of the longest builds I think I've done so far, like continuous build. And I'm sure like all the you know all the big YouTubers and stuff they they do all these massive builds that take hours and hours on end as well. But for me, if you look at my content, most of the enclosures aren't massive or super detailed. So you know eight hours is quite a lot <laughs> for my standards. Um, eight and a half hours, may I add. Then the in-betweeny bits, I just add grass, you know, grass and pack. Just seems, uh, oh, I mean grass and zoo. Seems fitting, and I'm, I call this area the Great Savannah, you know. It sounds grand. Um, so, yeah, Great Savannah. Not too special of a name, but it's it really describes it. It describes what this area is. Now, finally, the walkthrough exhibit for the kangaroos. This was actually my favourite. I really love this enclosure. Um, it really feels very zoo-like, and it feels very um, like something you would find in, in a zoo with a walkthrough area for the kangaroos. Because kangaroos, you can actually um, walk through, even though they can definitely be dangerous. But a lot of zoos, at least where I live, have also also have these kind of um, walkthrough areas with the kangaroos. So it's definitely not um, unusual. Um, and then this sort of shaded area is like a double gate sort of thing that you have in these walkthrough areas. I always make the custom double gates because I don't really like the wooden one we have in game. We are getting a new wooden gate for, uh, with the banyard pack, so that's quite nice. Um, 
Although, uh, I will probably still make uh, custom gates. They just work better. And then also a bit on the outside, so you can actually, if you don't want to go through the uh, habitat, you can also just watch the kangaroos from outside of the habitat as well. And the fence to shade it off a bit. This is also the fence I'll be using all around the kangaroo enclosure. Um, trying to add some detail basically with this fence, making it a bit more interesting looking. Um, uh, and it's better than the glass wall, isn't it? So yeah, then, what else, what else, I think we're nearing the end aren't we, yeah we are nearing the end, wow, I have talked all the way through, that is crazy, so yeah that's basically the speed build, that's a couple of more bits and bobs I add to the kangaroo enclosure, I hope you enjoy the speed build, but definitely stay tuned because we're doing a walkthrough at the end of this um, speed build, and um, yeah I'll, I, I guess I'll see you there in a couple of seconds, so enjoy the rest of the speed build, bye bye. Alright, so let's just get right into it, because there's a lot to see here with this huge build today. So, um, we'll have a look over here first. So we have the Great Savannah, a very cool sign, nicely decorated. And we'll go to the first animal, so the Warthogs. I'm sure you've seen this in the speed build at the end, more, more nearing the end at least. Warthogs have just this little cosy bit. You can already see the, the big square building in the back. Uh, yeah, Warthogs, very nice. Having a good old time here. Uh, I try to make it not look too crowded with the plants. It is a grassland zoo, after all. Um, yeah, I'm really glad to work on this zoo again. I'm sure I've mentioned this before during the speed build as well. But yeah, I'm really glad to be working on this zoo again. Um, although I don't know why I'm saying a speed build, because I'm actually recording this before I'm doing the voiceover for the speed build. But let's move over this way, right? So, these are the wild asses from one of the previous episodes. Uh, oh, they have babies now. Very cute. But that's not what we're here for. Because what we're here for... Uh, oh yeah, I built this little tower as well. I'm not sure if I included this in the speed build, but yeah, that's here. Is the walkthrough area for the kangaroos. Um, so we walk through here, have a double gate, of course. And yeah, so this is a walkthrough bit. Kangaroos over here. Having a good old time, lying in the grass. Um, but we can also have a look at what's on the other side, which are the Scimitar Horned Oryxes um, and the uh, Plain Zebras. Very cool. I mean, they're default animals. I'm sure you've seen them many times before. But, uh, yeah, you can't have a grassland zoo without the most iconic grassland animals, like the Zebra and the Giraffe, you know. So that's basically what this episode's about. And then kangaroos for good measure, and warthogs. So yeah, kangaroos, a huge gate for obviously a small animal, but it's just, you know, to make this all grand looking and stuff like that. Um, so now we can go up, and hello zookeeper. We can go to the elevated bit over here. Let's just speed up a bit. And we can have a look at the zebras from a more elevated view. And the Oryxes, no, not the, yeah, is it Oryx? Yeah, Oryx. <laughs> I, had to think for a sec I had to think for a second then what that was. But yeah, Oryx, uh, Zebras, but then you normally if you go over on this side, you can also see the inside as well, and oh, the giraffes appear to be inside. And we can see some elephants in the back as well, very cool. And uh, in, the, in that corner over there is where the kangaroos are. But uh, yeah. So, giraffes, elephants, and I think there's one going outside, so let's have a look. Oh, and there's one over here. So what I did is I put this scratching post down here, so it's right by this tree, so it looks like the the, the giraffes would like to hang around the tree, which makes sense, because I think what I would imagine that this to be is like a sort of a thing where they would hang food or something like that. So, uh, yeah. Very cool, and look at this, like having the giraffe like with the bottlenecks and being elevated like this is a really, really cool view. That is so cool, I haven't really gotten the chance to appreciate the giraffes this much. The giraffe's out, and the giraffe is having a poo. Oh, yep, there he, there he goes, oh she. And then there's a giraffe in the back as well, it seems, hiding behind the tree. Uh, 
Very cool. Oh, so pretty. Even the default animals are so pretty, because I always... You know, there's, people always say, like, you know, the default animals look a bit more cartoony and stuff like that, which, I mean, I do get. They do look a bit more cartoony compared to the recent models, but how can you not like these giraffes, right? Giraffes are just such, I don't know, magnificent animals. And then the third one is right over here. Looking over to the <laughs> elephants, which are obviously separate because um, you should never mix elephants with other uh, animals, they can be quite aggressive and destructive. Um, that's also why the elephant doesn't really have any trees, or except for that one there. They, they manage to stay off that one. But yeah, as you can see, the elephants can be quite destructive, so usually we won't find trees in an elephant habitat. And if you do, they will be like fenced off. Um, so yeah, there are some fallen down logs there, though, so that's cool. Not the most exciting enclosure, this one. I mean, an elephant egg habitat, it's mostly just muddy, let's be honest. But it has a nice water feature to make up for it. And then this is also where the uh, giraffes enter, and the elephants, and, and uh, the zebras and oryxes as well. But they can also enter down here, there's a, a lower um, entry point as well. And this giraffe is really hanging out here. Oh no, look, you can have some zebras and oryxes there as well. And then the idea is that on the other side, over there, as you can see, I've planned some areas out. There will be another, like, sort of African section there with um, some of the, spoiler alert, some of the, like, uh, big cats, perhaps, or some other African predators um, will be over there on that side. Uh, but yeah, that's everything for now. We, oh yeah, we can walk this path here as well. A bit of a zigzaggy road, I thought that was quite cool. Um, yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this speed build, and I hope you enjoyed the little walkthrough at the end. I know it's a, it's a, it's a quite a big episode. I'm not sure how long the episode's going to be. I haven't gone to editing yet, and it is quite scary. But yeah, uh, I don't know. But I hope it's not too long of a video, seeing as how large this build is. But um, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode, and bye bye.